Are you planning to have an epidural and want to know what positions that you can birth your baby? We are gonna go through three with a bonus position, four, four positions that you can birth your baby in that are effective and safe when you're having an epidural. Now, I want you to tune into it and you're gonna figure out where you feel the best connection, what position might be best for you now. If you're doing this before birth, absolutely amazing because now you have the opportunity to get in these positions with me as I go through them in this video and see if you can connect your breath to your pelvic floor. So we're gonna go through these positions. These are gonna be the positions that you plan to deliver, that you want to birth your baby out in. Now, a side note here is that if you have an epidural, you are still gonna feel pressure okay so when we have an epidural yes it blocks the c fibers it blocks those pain fibers of the nerve and usually they work most of the time they work they'll be in the spine the the, the epidural itself goes into the spine and then it blocks the nerves that go to your uterus that then go up to your brain that says hey i'm having pain okay so that's how an epidural works and it is medicine to desensitize these these C fibers of the nerves. You still feel the pressure because the epidural does not affect the D fibers of the nerve. And those D fibers are what tell the brain, hey, I'm having pressure. The, those D fibers are what allow you to actually feel that baby is descending and then coming through birth canal and opening your pelvic floor, which is actually awesome because then you can still control and help breathe baby out of the birth canal so this can be, um, this is just really good news if you plan to have an epidural, because then you can still breathe your baby out. You don't have to hold your breath and squeeze and bear down. Now, if you are planning, um, if you haven't checked out any of our content related to breathing baby out, I would definitely go check out our video of all about breathing baby down and out. And I will link it here in the show notes because that is a really important way to connect down to your pelvic floor. And it will help you through the pushing phase. So the pushing phase doesn't have to be that three to four hour experience um, with tearing and all, all sorts of stuff. So go check out that video. That will help you with the pushing phase. In this video specifically, we are gonna talk through the positions that are safe and effective when you have an epidural. You're not um, able most of the time to be out of the bed and um, in you know, weight bearing on your legs. And so um, there is one position that we will talk about that will allow that, but we'll go through the most common positions that will happen with the epidural. Position one here is side lying. Side lying is a great option to help you birth your baby with the epidural. So you'll have the epidural still connected on the back side. You don't have to be laying on it and you'll be on your side. So what's nice about having a physio ball underneath your leg, this could also be a peanut ball um, underneath your leg, is that it brings your foot higher than your knee, which creates what we call internal rotation of the hip. So this is external rotation, and then this is internal rotation. And when you actually internally rotate here, you're opening up the bottom of the pelvis. We call it the outlet. So you're opening up, allowing baby's head to come through with more ease and not be blocked by your sit bones. So if you're sitting more in this position, your sit bones will be more together. So when we're in more of the internal rotation, our sit bones are more flared. So it's just gonna help baby not be so blocked coming through that birth canal. Now, baby actually has to be deep and down, and you have to be ready to push for this internal rotation to, to actually be effective and helpful. And so um, this is easy to attain when you have an epidural. So when one of the nurses or your doula or your support partner can just help and put your leg on a birthing ball or on a peanut ball and help you attain this position. And as you're, if you know that you're like, yeah, that position looks comfortable for me, try it at home before you deliver. See, hey, is this position comfortable for me? Does my back feel good here? Does my pubic bone feel good here? How does the belly feel? And just get used to like thinking, oh, hey, I could have my baby in this position. And then take it a step further. And again, you're gonna go watch that birthing video, breathing your baby out, um, that I'll have linked in the show notes. But in this position, hey, can I take a nice deep breath and inhale and open my pelvic floor? Do I feel an opening of my vagina? Exhale, let it go. Do I feel the recoil? What needs to happen as we're breathing baby down and out is you inhale 
and you open, you imagine that on the inhale, your vagina, that is a rosebud, is blossoming. So we can see all the petals of the rosebud on the inhale, and then you exhale, you get some recoil. Practice this before you're in labor in this position and think, and you can even take your hand and kind of touch behind your sit bone. Um, and if you're in the comfort of your own home, you can feel inside the vagina. Hey, do I feel it opening? Can I breathe? Inhale, yeah, it's opening. Exhale, let it go. Okay, how good is your opening in this sideline position? Those are questions that you should ask yourself. That's stuff that you should actually just start to practice that can help bring baby deep into the birth canal and then help you push, effectively push baby out, aka breathe baby out in this exact position. So this is the first position we're gonna talk about. This is side line. Now you can check it on your left side or your right side. See if you have better control on one side or the other. Does one hip feel better when it's internally rotated versus the other hip? So these are all things you're gonna to wanna to check. You're gonna to wanna to birth in which that your body is in the most comfortable position. So why not check these positions out beforehand, all right? So this is number one, we'll move on to number two. This is position number two. You are just laying on your back with your knees falling out to your side, and maybe you have some, uh, some pillows underneath your knees. Nurses might suggest that they hold your knees, but you might wanna practice, hey, can my legs go open like this? And do I feel relaxed in this position? So my pelvic floor can open and relax, okay? So this is position number two, just simply on your back. This can be a great option. And can you take your nice deep breaths and feel the pelvic floor opening here? Exhale and let it go. Inhale and open. Exhale and let it go. You can take your finger and just kind of touch between your vulva or right inside the vagina. And hey, do you feel the opening with the inhale? And then exhale, you feel the recoil. During labor, you're gonna to wanna to practice, you, well, you're gonna to have to stay open even, even with your exhale. So that's a good thing you can practice. Can I inhale and open? Stay open even as I exhale. That's a coordination of the pelvic floor that you can start to develop before you're actually in labor, all right? So this is a position. You know, being on your back gets kind of a bad rap in labor. My true opinion on this is that if your pelvic floor is dynamic, it can move and stretch and open, then you can deliver in whatever position you want. You can have an epidural, you don't have to have an epidural. It doesn't matter. As long as your pelvic floor can fully open, that's what we want. And so why not practice that beforehand in different positions? So that is a great option, um, being on your back. Now, if this is hurting your hip, where my SI joint is talking to me in this position, I might need more support underneath my knee, um, or this might not be as good of an option. Maybe I felt more connection when I was in sideline. That's why it's so great. You know you're gonna get an epidural or you want one or you wanna be prepared if you decide to get one. Test these positions out beforehand. See if you have control in those positions. We'll move on to position number three right here. Position number three is called a semi-fowler position. This is where the bed is actually up at a more 45 degree angle and you birth in this position. So you get a little bit more assist with gravity here, but again, you're gonna wanna make sure that opening your legs feels good in this position. Now we talked about in that sideline position, you could get some internal rotation with your heels out and your knees kind of in. You know, the same is kind of true in this position. Can you get your heels out and your knees are in. So you're not like fully just knees wide open, okay? That's kind of cranking on my hips. Maybe that's gonna crank on your hips. And so you wanna, you wanna practice, hey, can my, my heels come out a little bit while I'm in this, in this position? And how can I stuff the pillows or how can I teach my partner or my birth, birth support person to stuff the pillows so that feels good? Um, and then you just wanna go through the same pattern. Can I inhale and open? Exhale and let it go. All right, inhale, opening vulva, opening vagina. Exhale and let it go. What did you feel like? Did you have good control in this position? Does this position feel good on your back or your sacrum? If not, let's find you another position. And yes, you might not realize like that doesn't feel so good while you're in labor, but that might mean that your body's just not as comfy in that position. And we want your body comfy and soft and relaxed 
Um, and that all matters even with an epidural. So even though you're not feeling the pain because of the epidural, if you know that your body's not that comfortable in this position, this is not going to be an optimal birthing position for you and could really make your labor longer. You know, it could make it that if my body's not comfortable here and I can't fully connect with my pelvic floor here, let's try a different position where my body might be more relaxed and that means it might be more efficient at breathing my baby out. All right, we're going to move on to our bonus position, position number four. All right, position number four is a little bit more challenging to actually demonstrate. The reason for this is I don't actually have a trapeze here, but a lot of hospitals will have a trapeze bar at the end of the bed where you can get into a squat position while holding on to the bar. And in the squat position, you can then breathe baby out. They're going to help support your legs and get your legs in a position that you can be in this squat position to breathe baby out. So the best way for you to mimic this position to see if you can actually breathe baby out in this position is to start getting in squat positions yourself. Maybe you have um, a railing or a banister or kind of some kind of support beam in your house that you can hold onto and see if you can get into a squat with. Um, and can you breathe in that position? And do you have good pelvic floor control in that squat position? Just like we have talked through in all the other positions. So I'm gonna show you an example of what that could look like. I don't have the trapeze bar, but I can show you what a deep squat can look like that would mimic having that trapeze bar. So here is a deep squat position where you can take nice deep breaths into your pelvic floor. You can take a hand and put it right next to the vulva. Can I feel my pelvic floor opening with the inhales and exhale? Can I let it go? All right. And so you want to see what your control is like and if this could possibly be a position that you could birth in. Because in the hospital bed, you would have the trapeze bar right here and it would be supporting you here. And then the nurses and support staff would help you get your legs underneath you so you can come into this position. A lot of American women have difficulty relaxing and connecting to their pelvic floors in a squat position. We're just not used to it. We don't go to the bathroom on, in a squat. We don't do a lot of things that we relax in in a squat. And so it's really good to practice this if you know that you want to use this position um, to really get the baby out and to push baby out and to breathe baby out, then I would highly recommend getting into a deep squat, sink into it, get your hips nice and open, and then really start your breath patterns and see if you can breathe and open. Okay, so in this video, we just went through four possible birth positions that you can do if you have an epidural. And we talked about how to breathe the baby down and out through the birthing process. So you're not gonna spend hours bearing down and pushing baby out while holding your breath, which can lead to longer pushing times and could increase perineal tearing. Now, those longer pushing times, um, they're not really supported in the research. I'm basing this off the clinical outcomes that we see with all of our clients who we teach how to coordinate their pelvic floor, breathe their babies down and out, um, and how to really connect to that breath before birth. And when you do that, most of our clients birth their babies within 45 minutes of pushing, AKA breathing baby down and out. So I want to give you these tools, check out our breathing baby out video and practice these different positions. If you know that you're going to have an epidural like, and subscribe to our video. If this is helpful content to you, um, if you are delivering soon or whatever phase of pregnancy you're in, tell us how many weeks you are and tell us your due date. It would be fun to get some due date twins on here. Um, and just to see other people who are delivering at the same time as you, are you planning on getting an epidural? Drop that in the notes. Um, or do you just want to have options if you do decide to get an epidural? All right. I would love to connect with you. Please leave your comments in the show notes, like, and subscribe, and you can check us out on Instagram as well. Take care.